The goal of this video is to allow you to learn Python, even without prior knowledge. Believe me, you can do it. Just do it! Yes, you can! Python is a programming language. In other words, it is a way for you to communicate with your computer. And trust me, it wants to hear what you have to say. Talk to me. Just like Harry Potter used partial tongue to speak to snakes, you can use Python to talk to your computer. I've never talked to a snake before. Don't worry, Harry. We'll get you learning Python in no time. But first, we need to make sure that we have Python installed on your computer. So grab your computer and follow along with me. If this is your first time with us, allow me to extend a personal invitation for you to get your brushes and, and your paints and paint along with us each show. Let's go to www.anaconda.com slash distribution to download the latest version of Python. And while that's downloading, please hit that subscribe button and that notification bell to get more awesome Python content. He's done! Done? Mm -hmm. We'll hit continue, 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 agree, install on a specific disk. We'll do our Macintosh HD, choose folder. Make sure you go to users and click whatever user you're on and then choose. And I choose us. That's where you want this to install. Go ahead and click continue, and now click install. Okay, click continue, and now close. And we can move that to the trash. And if you were able to follow along with me, then you have successfully installed Python on your computer. The next step would be to get a text editor. All a text editor is, is a way for you to type in code. Don't be jealous that I've been chatting online with babes all day. Kind of like a Microsoft Word and save it as a Python file. I think you'll understand what it is once we get going. But for now, just pick your favorite text editor and get that installed on your computer. There's all kinds of text editors on the market and you can choose basically whichever one you want. On Mac, I prefer either Sublime or Atom. On Windows, I've heard Spider's really good, and on Linux, there's a whole bunch of choices as well. So pick whichever one you like. I will link in the description some of the more popular ones for Mac, Linux, and Windows. So check any of those out. Time to write your first code. Here is a text editor. I'm going to click File, New File. We will do a File Save As. Make sure you remember where you saved it and save it with the extension .py. The .py is the extension for Python programs. Now we are prepared to type Python code. The first thing we are going to do is print. And no, I don't mean print a document like in Microsoft Word. In the context of computer programming, print means displaying on the screen. In Python, you type the word print with parentheses, then in quotes you can type any text you want, then close the quotes and parentheses. I'm going to show you how to run your Python program. On Mac or Linux, you can do this in the terminal. Just type the word terminal in the spotlight search and click enter. And if you are wondering why mine is green, that's because you can customize your terminal to be how you want. And I chose green. And I'm a huge fan of the way you lose control and turn into an enormous green rage monster. On Windows, you can do this by opening the Anaconda Navigator and clicking on Jupyter Lab, then open the terminal from there. We need to learn three terminal commands. The terminal is like using your computer with plain text. In it, we can write certain commands to navigate through folders. For example, if you have a document you want to open, you can go to the place it's located and click on it. Suppose that document is saved in a folder inside of your documents folder. Then you use your mouse to click documents, then the folder, and then click the file. Long story short, the three terminal commands I'm going to show you will allow you to click through folders 
so we can open up Python files. I have written all of the terminal commands in the description, so if you can't remember at any time, just look there for reference. They remember forever. First is pwd. When you type pwd, it will show you the file path and directory you are currently in. Next is ls. This lists all of the files and folders inside your current directory. And our third and final terminal command we need is cd, which stands for change directory, not compact disk. That would have sucked. You type cd, then the folder you want to enter into. And side tip, if you ever want to cd backwards or back out of a folder, type cd followed by dot dot. Okay, your mission. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to use these commands to navigate to wherever you saved that python.py file. I saved mine in a folder called examples inside of documents. So I'll type cd documents slash examples. Let's list what's inside examples by using ls to see if the file is actually there. And there it is, example.py. Now that we are in the correct spot, we can execute or run the Python code. I will clear the screen using command plus K, and now we type in the word Python and then the name of our Python file and hit the enter key. Our computer just read what we wrote in Python and obeyed what we had written. We wrote print hello world and now we see the words displayed right here. Isn't that amazing? You are coding Python. If you were able to stick with me so far and write your first Python code, please give me a thumbs up. If you are having trouble up to this point, comment with your questions below and I wouldn't mind you hitting the thumbs up as well. Get us there as fast as you can. I'll drop you to it for It is now my pleasure to introduce to you the superhero. I am the Waffler, Golden Crispy, Bad Guys of History of Python programming. It's called iPython and no, it's not a product of Apple. It stands for Interactive Python. In your terminal, no matter which folder you are currently in, type the word IPython and click enter. You can run your code in IPython by typing run, then the .py file. Just make sure you're in the correct directory. All of the terminal commands work just the same inside of IPython. But what IPython is really amazing for is the fact you can write code one line at a time. Why am I showing this to you when all we've done is print one thing with one line of code? Well, my friend, that's because this tool will help you on your coding journey. We are but men rock. Because it acts like a database for all Python functions. For example, earlier we used the print function. Perhaps we want to learn more about print and how to use it. Then we type print question mark and hit enter. It will show you the documentation of print and everything you need to know about how to use it. So from now on, if you are ever stuck, the first place to go for help is IPython. Next, I want to teach you about variables. In computer programs, you can store pieces of data as variables. If we type x equals 5, then every time we refer to x, the computer will use it as a 5. You can overwrite this at any time by assigning x a different number, say x equals 6. Now we type x and 6 pops out. By the way, numbers are not the only thing you can store with variables. There are different data types you can store. A number without a decimal is called an int, which is short for integer. A number with a decimal is called a float. And letters or anything inside of quotations are called strings. No strings if you ever want to know what data type you are using, just do type and then enter the variable that you want and it will show you what type that is. With different data types come different powers and capabilities. With great power comes great responsibility. In Python, you can use ints and floats in calculations like you would a calculator. For example, say x is equal to five and y is equal to three. Then three times x plus y star star two, which means y squared is 24 or 
200 divided by x is 40. Suppose you need to do the same calculation over and over, but you don't want to keep retyping it every single time. Well then, you can create a function. Conjunction, junction, what's your function? A programming function allows you to do any type of calculation or programming inside of it. Let's jump into an example so you can see what I mean. Say I want to calculate how much money I should spend on a tip. Seabass and the fellows offered to pick up our check. They said just put it on their tab. But I don't want to have to type out a number nope. times 0.15 every single time. So I create a function that takes in a number and will do that calculation for me. To do this, we write def, which stands for define, the name of the function, which we can call whatever we want. And in this case, let's call it tip underscore calculator, parenthesis. Any variable we put inside will be input. So we close our parentheses and now we add a colon. It is important to note Python's emphasis on spacing here. Welcome to the space jam. Every time you want something to be inside of a function, you need to space over the correct amount of times, four spaces for each level. So to do a calculation as part of this function or inside of this function, I need to hit the space bar four times before I type anything. And now we type return with X, the number we input, multiplied by 0.15. And now over here in IPython, we can type run, and now we can give type calculator any number we want. So type calculator of 20 will be the exact same as doing 20 times 0.15. Now let's say we want things to be just a tiny bit more complicated. Suppose on meals that cost greater than $50, you usually tip 20% instead of 15%, and you want to include this inside of your function. We can, just by using a simple if statement. Inside of our function, we will write if. I said if. Oh. If. Then a condition. In this case, x greater than 50, colon. And now in the next line, we want it to occur inside of the if statement, so we must make sure we are indented for spaces. But it looks like it already did that for me. And now we can write return x times 0 0.20. So basically, if the condition is met, do what is inside of the if statement. Now, if the condition is not met, or in other words, x is not greater than 50, we want to just do the regular 15%. So we will type else colon, and inside that we can do our normal return 0.15 times x. Going back to our code in IPython, Tip calculator of 20 will return the same thing as 20 times 0.15, and tip calculator of 51 will return the same thing as 51 times 0.20. Great job! You now know how to write basic functions using arithmetic and if statements. I now want to introduce you to even more data types in Python. We have already mentioned ints, floats, and strings. The first thing I want to show you is called a list. It is exactly what it sounds like, a list of data. It can be a list of numbers, strings, floats, or even a combination. To create a list, you can do brackets, then enter the items in a list separated by a comma. Don't forget to close the last bracket. I have something intense I need to show you, and please don't let your head explode. Do you want my head to explode? but you can also put lists inside of lists. For example, if we create a list, one comma, 5.5 comma, uh, the string of five comma, 10 comma, 20, and then a list of one comma, two comma, and then the string three. When lists are inside of lists, it can be referred to as an array. Arrays are a big reason why people love Python because of a package called NumPy. 
Most programming languages have packages you can import and use for a specific purpose. Here in Python, I will import NumPy as NP. This means the letters NP now represent the NumPy package. Now, because print didn't belong to any package, we could just type the word print. But if we are using any package that comes from NumPy, we must put NP in front of it. But what types of functions does NumPy even have? In IPython, there's another awesome thing you can do. Type out NP period, then hit the tab key. Now you see tons and tons of different functions that the NumPy package contains. Fuck my grandmama's carpet! She don't like nobody on the carpet, especially police! If you want to learn more about a single one, we can use our question mark. NP.arrays are simply lists of lists. They have a shape to them. For example, let's create an array, NP.array of a list of one list with one one and another list with two two. This has two lists, each with two items. So the shape of this array is two by two. A lot of things on your computer can be stored like arrays. For example, images can be arrays of numbers that store R, G, B, or red, green, blue values for each pixel. When you have data in the form of lists or arrays, going through them to perform calculations or analysis could really take forever. Luckily, you can create a for loop. For loops tell the computer to do something over and over again for as long as you tell it. For the longest time. Whoa. Hence the name for loop. Let's go to our text editor and create another function called for underscore test that takes in a parameter b, where we have the input of this function be a list. Now, if the user does not give us a list, then let's tell them. So using our knowledge of types, data types, and if statements, we'll type if type of b is not a list, then we'll return this is not a list. Else, if it is a list, for k in b, which means do for each entry in the list, we'll print b. Let's go back to the terminal and run this code and give it a list. <laughs> we'll give it a one two three the word test and another list with two zeros each item in the list has been printed off you can also make for loops by telling the computer to just run a certain number of times in ipython if we do for i in range 10 then it will do whatever we put inside 10 times we can even use the value i which acts like a count for the iteration so if inside of this for loop we print i you'll see it is the number of times you have looped so far so the first time we looped zero times the second time we had looped once truly you have a dizzying intellect wait till i get going where was I? Now, let's do another function example with a for loop. Say we want a function that takes in two values, a number and a limit. The function will compute a number raised to the power of every number up to the limit. We'll call it power of a comma b, and inside we'll create a for loop that goes as many times as our limit. So for i in range starting at 1 and going to b plus 1, meaning do this as many times as the value of b and keep the value i, we'll print a comma raised to the power of comma i comma is and then we'll do a star star i now in ipython let's run our newly saved code and do a few examples so if we type power of five comma three we'll get five raised to the one power is five the two power is 25 and 125 or power two comma eight see that two raised to the eight is 256. so there you have it you have learned about variables how to print how to write functions how to use if statements and how to use for loops. Those are the fundamentals of Python programming. Congratulations! Congratulations! You now know Python. With these basic skills, you can code literally anything. Now, does this make you a master coder? Probably not. Here is what I recommend you do. Number one, practice code. Work on your own projects, or if you can't think of your own projects, go to websites like Project Euler and try and solve their math problems using Python. 
Number two, learn something new every day. If you have friends that know how to code, communicate with them often. Visit websites like stackoverflow.com to learn more tips and tricks. And use YouTube to your advantage to always learn new things about coding. And speaking of YouTube, if you want a channel that posts Python content with short and sweet videos about functions and how to's with tutorials, then look no further and subscribe to my channel. I am dedicated to helping you master your coding skills. I learn new things about coding almost every day. Your journey of learning will continue as well. Thanks for watching and please let me know any questions you have in the comments below. I wish you the best of luck with your coding.